This is CBN News Watch. Thanks for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Brody Carter. Many Christians couldn't imagine not having a Bible in the language they speak. That's the reality for millions, and it's pushing Bible translators to find new and faster ways to get scripture to every corner of the world. Wycliffe Associates is a leader in this effort. It's partnering with churches in distant countries and seeing an explosion of life-changing activity. There are more than 5,000 people working in Zambia right now, translating the Bible into 20 native languages. Ephraim Graham traveled to the African country to witness people reading the Bible in their own tongue for the very first time. Zambia, known for its vast landscapes, walking safaris, and Victoria Falls, is still called Africa's best kept secret, and it's giving birth to yet another untold story. Men and women meeting daily to translate the Bible into the languages they speak. What's your first memory of the Bible? Yes, John 3:16. Henry Mumba plants and pastors churches, and he's helping to lead church-owned translation work in Mansa. My pastor was a missionary from another country, Malawi, and uh, he came into, into, into this town, and uh, when he, they preached the gospel to me, the first verse that I knew was John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Scholars estimate there are at the very least 7,000 languages spoken around the world. Fewer than 800 of those languages have the Bible fully translated, both Old and New Testament, leaving thousands still in need of translation. Many of those are here on the continent of Africa in hard to reach places, as well as Asia and Indo-Pacific regions. That's the sound of another area reached. Churchgoers in Mansa reading and hearing the New Testament in Aushi, their mother tongue, for the very first time. And after reading, there's dancing. It's just like God is speaking our language. A first, even for Henry Mumba, who remembers hearing John 3, 16 at 19. Now hearing and seeing scripture in his native language at 58. It's the first written literature. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, in Aussie it. language. Yeah. It's the first written literature. The Balat Bible. It's the, it's the first uh, written literature. We've never had anything before. This New Testament gift is more than literature. For me, it's not only about translating the Bible, having the Bible printed. Uh, to me, it's uh, about life changing. I've seen a lot of lives being changed through Bible translation. That includes his own. Thomas and Machinga travels to African countries teaching translators to use technology. Though that is not how this Bible translation career began for the young husband and father who grew up in Zimbabwe, a child of refugees, fleeing civil war in Mozambique. I appeared at the meeting, I was drunk, because by that time I was doing both lives. I was going to church and I was doing world things. So I appeared at the meeting, I was drunk, and they said, you have to go home and come back tomorrow. Thomas returned and did the work but the power of the word he translated didn't become real until he found himself sick and in the hospital. My mother was telling me we couldn't eat anything at home. Sometimes they couldn't have transport to come and visit me at hospital. <laughs> then they started talking to me about taking Christ as my savior. And uh, when Bible translation comes, I was having that mind of doing that, the life that I was trying to, to leave behind. But something started changing through Bible translation. 
During our visit to this region of the world, there are actually three New Testament translations being celebrated. The Ninja in Lusaka, Leia in Livingston, and Oshi here in Mansa. We're in Livingston for its celebration of the New Testament in Leia, the mother tongue of those who call this village home, including Buster Paul Tembo. Our country has 73 languages and only seven were considered official languages. Those are the only ones who had scripture translated. Tembo is the pastor who leads church-owned translation work here. When you bring it out in your own language, when you read it out in your own language, even the interpretation of it to the people, the understanding that you have or you bring to the people is so clear and it has a great spiritual impact in their lives. That impact is why Wycliffe Associates facilitates church-owned Bible translation here in Zambia and other parts of the world. When we say church-owned Bible translation, we mean that local church owns not just the translation process, but also the scriptures that they produce at the end of the day. Simon Ong is president. What's lost in translation? <laughs> That's a very good question. I think part of the uh, challenge now is what's the, how can we further accelerate the process without sacrificing the quality of, of the translations? When you see the field, you see the need for scriptures, right? People are dying every day without coming to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so the urgency, I guess, for us is really there in terms of being able to press forward. Press forward with the message God loves you. In every language. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Zambia. Well, coming up, a side of Fox News host Harris Faulkner you may not have seen before. She talks about her personal faith and the power of prayer to move mountains. Hear why Harris prays big with specificity. Welcome back. Harris Faulkner is an Emmy Award winning anchor and a popular host on Fox News. She's also a woman of faith who believes in the power of prayer. Her latest book explores the impact that prayer has had on her life and the lives of others. Charlene Aaron spoke with her about her faith and why she believes faith still moves mountains. In her book, Faith Still Moves Mountains, Miraculous Stories of the Healing Power of Prayer, Faulkner reminds readers that God's light always shines through dark times. It's a message she felt needed to be sent given the life-changing impact and many losses suffered due to COVID-19. We've all reached this point in our lives, I think, after the pandemic, um, and we have individual struggles as well, but we've, we've reached that point at, at times in our lives where we wonder, well, if there is a God who loves me, why are things going wrong? Why, when I pray, doesn't the Lord answer my prayers contemporaneously? Faulkner points out how a recent survey showing a growing number struggling to believe that God still answers prayer could be part of the problem. The one part of that Gallup survey is people no longer believe in high numbers that God intervenes in our lives. So that's very important because you're less likely to be direct and big and fervent in your prayer if you don't think it, it is being heard. And, and the litmus test for whether or not your prayer is heard is not whether or not you got your prayers answered the way you wanted them or in the timing that you want. And that is something that people sometimes need to be reminded of. In her book, the host of Fox News is outnumbered and the Faulkner focus felt that by sharing a collection of powerful testimonies, it would help more people embrace the practice of prayer. I've been told by them, and they, they tell their own, in their own words, in the book, that it was through their fervent prayer and communion and relationship with the Lord that they realized that our spiritual vital tool in the fight in a world that would want us to give up yes. is prayer. A lesson Faulkner gleaned from her mother. There have been times in my life when the mountains have seems so much bigger than the dreams that I had. At a time in this country that didn't necessarily celebrate people who look like us, 
my mom truly believed that my dad's love of country was part of the answer to take us all forward. And she prayed about that mightily. Included is the story of Ernestine Reese, who in 2019 survived an EF4 tornado that tore through Lee County, Alabama. While the storm devoured most everything in its path, Reese miraculously survived, huddled inside her prayer closet, the only thing left standing in her neighborhood. Ernestine prayed one simple sentence. Thank you, God. Thank you. Wow. Before the storm started, during the storm, when everything was pulling away, and I mean, she could hear it all being pulled away, and after the storm. I oh thank the God. Lord. You tell God, thank you, King King. Storms, says Faulkner, often mirror difficult times, like when her father passed away. I was so sorrowful and missed him so much and had lost my mother Thanksgiving before that four years, and I felt lost. And when I did pray, I talked the whole time and remembered some words that my mom had told me, don't treat God like Santa Claus, you have to be silent. You have to sit and be still because faith still moves mountains. Mountains that can't be moved by rituals, but by faith in God who stands ready to answer when we call. I've been put here as a witness and in that role, through the testimonies that I've collected, I've learned how to pray better. So I pray big and with specificity. And my one prayer, as you ask me, for everyone, is that they open themselves up to the point where they can reignite the power of prayer and let bloom in their hearts the hope and unconditional, true unconditional love that the Lord brings and be patient with him so that he can do mighty works in your life in his time. Faulkner also includes prayers that reflect today's challenging times, prayers she invites readers to boldly pray. I do tell people that when you read these prayers as your own out loud, when you say them, they have power. So be sure to have enough time in a space where you are able to be quiet and focused. Faulkner's book, Faith Still Moves Mountains, Miraculous Stories of the Healing Power of Prayer, is available wherever books are sold. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Well, still ahead, good news for people who may be at risk for colon cancer. A home test that could increase chances of survival to 100%. Stay tuned for those details. Well, it kills more than 50,000 Americans each year. Colon cancer is on the rise, especially among younger people. The good news is that there's an at-home test kit for early detection now available. Medical reporter Lori Johnson brings us those details. Record numbers of young people are being diagnosed with colon or rectal cancer. According to doctors, that's largely due to lifestyle choices, such as a diet high in red meat and processed foods, obesity, lack of exercise, and smoking. While this cancer affects all groups, African Americans are as much as 40% more likely to die from colorectal cancer than others. Fortunately, that could be changing. Here at Trinity Baptist Church, a predominantly black congregation in Columbus, Ohio, parishioners learn how to prevent early death from colon cancer so they can serve the Lord on this side of eternity as long as possible. Assistant Pastor Janet Shepard's family has worshiped here for five generations, which can be common in these pews. This is our home and has been our home for a long time. What's not so common here is Janet's decision to get a colonoscopy, a procedure that can detect actual cancer or precancerous polyps. Some people say, if I don't know about it, I, I don't have to deal with it, but you will eventually have to deal with it. Janet's procedure revealed three precancerous polyps, which were removed during the same colonoscopy. Without that screening and discovery, the polyps would likely have grown into tumors, possibly even taking her life. Had I missed that opportunity, who knows what would have happened? Those polyps would have remained, 
we don't know if they would have turned to cancerous, they're precancerous, but they would have remained in my body and had the potential. During worship, Janet passes out blue colorectal cancer awareness ribbons and shares her testimony, hoping others will follow her lead. When you talk about it from the pulpit, when you talk about it in your circles around church and that type of thing, people listen and it's like, wow, if that happened to Reverend Jan, if that happened to whoever, maybe I need to listen to what my doctor's saying. I said the first miracle he did was at a wedding when he turned water to wine. Senior Pastor Victor Davis believes it's totally appropriate for spiritual leaders to give medical advice at church. It is not just a place where you come in fellowship and worship, but it's also a place where you receive resources that you might be able to go back and serve the community better. He adds that leaders of black churches in particular carry a responsibility to protect their congregation's health. The African-American population in many cities um, oftentimes is the population that does not have access um, to the information that is needed so that they might get the health care that they need. When it comes to getting a colonoscopy, there can be roadblocks, such as the procedure cost, no transportation, someone to accompany them, or the ability to take off work. As a potential solution, Ohio State University started a program using home test kits, not to take the place of a colonoscopy, but to cheaply and easily identify those who should make it a priority to get a colonoscopy and those who may wait. When you take a home test, you put a stool sample in this little container and mail it to the lab, which can detect microscopic traces of blood in the stool, a red flag for colon cancer. Some Trinity members are receiving the tests and urged to take action if needed. This is an opportunity to receive and be tested in a private, uninvasive way. And that if it comes back positive, you can take the next step. This is a preliminary opportunity for you to get control on your health and know what's going on in your body. Dr. Sabankar Chakraborty, a program developer, says the goal is to motivate those in the earliest stages of colorectal cancer to get a colonoscopy, rather than waiting until they possibly experience symptoms such as visibly bloody stools and other unusual bowel activity, abdominal pain, or sudden weight loss. And once they're diagnosed at a later stage, then the, the risk of death is high. For example, if you got diagnosed with stage four colorectal cancer, there is a 90% chance that you will not survive for five years. But imagine if you get, uh, if you get a colonoscopy and you get uh, precancerous polyps removed, you have suddenly increased your chances to 100% survival. Dr. Chakraborty says people not involved in the program can order home tests online. He reiterates those who get a positive test should schedule a colonoscopy, adding the often dreaded PrEP isn't as bad as it used to be. The good news is there are several what we call low volume PrEPs, so you don't have to drink as much as you used to do before. And there's little to no pain. So there are sedation techniques with uh, where you can be just completely asleep, pretty comfortable, and when you wake up, you're all done. So while home test kits and colonoscopies aren't anyone's idea of a good time, doctors say they're definitely worth the effort because they could save your life or the life of someone you love. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Well, before we go, here are some words of encouragement from author, speaker, and TV host, Beth Townsend. When it comes to living your life on purpose, wouldn't it be great if there was a big, fat, easy button you could push every day that is God's yeses for you, the things you should do and the things you shouldn't do? Wouldn't it be great if we could know what to do every day by knowing what not to do every day? One of the things I learned, because I was on my own at 17, that if you want to know who you are, sometimes you start with who you're not. Because if you want to eliminate all the people you're never going to be, the things you're never going to do, then who you really are in Christ begins to emerge fully in freedom and on purpose. Last month, I told you that I'd wanted to become an author for a long time before God opened that door. 
And sometimes we think about good things and God things. And a good thing came along that tempted me to go off on my own journey away from God's purpose for me, but I didn't know at the time. So someone invited me to get involved in a book where I had a chapter in the book and it cost money. And unfortunately at the time, we didn't have the money, but I wanted so bad to have that book that I took a shortcut and it turned out it, it was good, but it wasn't great and it wasn't God's best for me. So sometimes being able to know who we're not helps us eliminate the paths that we shouldn't ever go on. And a life on purpose, guess what? There is an easy button and it's called Colossians 3.23. And it says, do your work as for the Lord, not for men. So if you want to know what to do and you want that easy button, you put that in front of everything you say yes to. If you're going to do it as for the Lord, you know what? Do it. But if you don't have that kind of energy, purpose, and passion to put behind it, it's a not for you. That's how you know you're not. So living a life on purpose, it can sound easy, and it is easy, as long as you take that scripture and let it guide you. Because if you're going to do it for the Lord, you're going to be your best you, and that's going to be your life on purpose. A refreshing encouragement from TV host Beth Townsend. That's going to do it for us in this edition of CBN News Watch. Remember that you can find more of our news programming on CBN News Channel anytime online as well with CBNNews.com. Also, tell us what you think about the stories that you've seen by emailing newswatch at CBN.com. You can also talk to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We hope you'll join us next time. Have a great day. Introducing a brand new way to start your morning. Get your daily quick start from CBN News. A quick read on the important news of the day delivered right to your inbox. Stay current on breaking news, politics, and entertainment. Discover how God is moving around the world and here at home. Plus, get exclusive stories and daily scripture encouragement just for you. Stay informed. Go to quickstart.news and subscribe today.